I'll go with that. I was thinking this morning how much um, we had this we had this great grandmother who we just all of us adored. Yeah. And she made um, self rising biscuits for every meal that ever happened. And then the next morning she would take the leftovers, remember the study? She would butter them and toast them. Butter them and toast them and then she'd make these the eggs with these little biscuits and you jam. I mean it was just great, but I was just thinking this morning as I was making this, how I I don't make those biscuits, but just watching her do that and now I certainly have peasant hands, so I'm right in there with her. But um, and just have such a cool thing to show your kids and and to make with them. And so I guess this is a thing that people don't do because it's of convenience foods. So it's kind of fun just to learn how to make a real pie, like a real old fashioned. Um, I'm going to show you a very traditional pie crust that is so easy and full. The idea is that the fat uh, melts slower as it's baking, which creates uh, air pockets, which gives you a flakier crust. Pretty good. You kind of don't want to work the dough too much. It's kind of a, a good rule of thumb. So I have four cups of flour in here, a pinch of salt, which is probably a teaspoon, but, and then um, I put it, so I put two. Now this you can even go, if you want, you can put four, ta four tablespoons. Don't that. But I put two tablespoons of sugar. And this I just mix up. So this is the easiest way, but it's not the most economical way. But this is a one pound of Crisco that you put in here, which is four, for four crusts. But like I said, you can divide this and put this is two cups, basically at 16 ounces. So you can put um, one cup of Crisco, two sticks of butter if you want. Or you can do all butter. But this is uh, the easiest and flakiest dough. And does the butter Crisco work? They work together. Same? It's just if you have a thing and you don't want to use too much shortening. It tastes great. I made this one with only great. shortening. Are just this one is only with shorting, and you can we'll all sample this one and see. But it, like I said, I'm not going to finish it, right? but we'll see. You'll see. Uh, so. so I have done this um, two different ways. The serious, old-fashioned way is um, first I cover this with flour, just to stick like crazy. So, the serious old-fashioned way is like this. Very little like this. And this is the way that I normally do it. But then this morning at 6 a.m., when I was thinking about you guys, <laughs> I did it like this, and then I thought, why did I never do this before? Oh, that's because this I takes about 15 seconds. I, I do that. So, what you want to do is um, get it sort of pea-sized. But even this, you don't need to get carried away because, like I said, it just adds pockets of, um, you know, slower melting things that give you uh, flaky crust. So this is where you mix gently just until... No, that's not yet. <laughs> when, <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, <laughs> cut with two knives or a pastry cutter, I suppose this is. Oh, yeah. And... This is not... Get out time. your... your um, your batter blenders and just put it in there. Yeah. What's that? This is a skill. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is like almost like a grandma thing that's just fun yes, to learn how to do because nobody teaches us how to do it. Because the problem is you want it to stay like this because you want it to okay, melt. Yeah. So that's about as much as I do. Like that. Look at how quick that was really. It's a lot easier than the knives and I don't know why I've been doing that. I've taken so many classes like jam making or ice cream making. I, whenever I see something like that, I go take it. It's so fun. And um, the really great thing about coming to you guys is farm school. Is yes. Look at these eggs. These are right from those chickens outside that are blue. What kind of chicken gives you blue eggs? The Americanas. She offered me a chicken before. I was like, I don't know. I live in you know, Pasadena in the city. I don't know if they ever go over big. But here, <laughs> oh, God, it's perfection it. here. So um, everybody knows how to, does everybody here know how to get an egg out of an egg white? Kind of separate the egg from the egg white? An old fashioned way? Or? Yeah, I, well, I do it this way. I feel I feel yeah. guilty breaking this beautiful thing in half. So um, I made a well here in the middle, okay. and I put my um, two egg yolks. Oh, these eggs are so sweet. sweet. Yolk. Okay. I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. I don't know the I don't know the answer to that question. Like I said, I'm not really a kitchen teacher. Egg whites for later for. To brush a pie. Mm. 
Well, see, that's why you separated it because you wanted to use that. Figure. That's right. But I have to say, I, my husband eats egg whites, and I have the can, the can yeah. uh, carton, and we use that. So um, here again, I'm going to use ice water, and um, it's about six ounces. Yeah, okay. okay. So I'll give you guys that discount. <laughs> Mush that up like that in the center. So Debbie, I put two uh, egg yolks. I made a well yeah. in the middle. I had two egg yolks and six ounces of water, yeah. and then I mixed that there in the well. And yeah. this is this is the gentle part. I, I fold I fold this uh, my flour shortening a mixture in with the liquid. And this is my trick. And I don't know if this is kosher really or not, but I kind of mush it with the. That's why I like this bowl. Is I mush it to the sides and kind of mush it all in with that water. So fold first, then mush. Yeah. <laughs> What's that's 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 you bake on convection or just stand I don't, I don't, in fact, I think my oven has a convection that never turned out. And your oven it does. my oven I'm like, I, like I said, I'm not really a chef or anything. I'm really, a mom cook, so. It's still pretty crumbly and all like that. And so I take a piece of parchment like this. And you know the other thing, if you have a pasta dish, which is a perfect, and, um, and then take a piece of wax paper or a parchment like this and it doesn't matter because I'm not going to use it for what I and I just go like this and I stick it in my refrigerator like that and it should, I mean they say overnight you can go a couple hours and if you're in an emergency throw it in the freezer for an hour you know whatever, you just, you just want it cold and uh, because this way, this shape, you can take a knife and quarter it Hmm. And that's the right amount per uh, high section. Okay? So this is going to go in your refrigerator. This is one of my favorite things. This is a great thing. I even have another one that I scrape the, the calcium deposit off my tool thing. You know what I mean? This is a great thing to have around the house. So I'm going to put these 10 apples in here, which is going to be too many. Because I played this morning. Thank you very much. So this would be two tablespoons of flour. One one cup of sugar, that's two tablespoons of flour, one cup of sugar, a teaspoon of cinnamon. And um, this is such a preference thing. I start with one teaspoon, but if it doesn't look brown enough or taste really cinnamon sugar when I'm gonna sample it, which I didn't do this morning, but. So it's kind of good to do this before you roll the dough because it's all the hands of the dough and that's yucky and this is sticky. and. So it's basically this, is how simple. You don't need to add all this other stuff. I think that it coats, I'm going to give you a good answer. It coats all the apples with all these things. Okay, so you guys can taste that and tell me, do you think it needs to be? Is it enough? I'm going to take out my prepared dough. Okay, so once again, I'm going to put my sugar in here. Okay, so I'm going to I just kind of overdo it with flour because, um, so this is what it looks like. And I am going to do this so that maybe somebody will take it home, but I usually do um, a pirate. For your kids' so. principle. Uh huh. And that's one of your four ones. So this, this is when I do the four. Okay. Okay, so. I, it's not sure. It's really, like I said, put either the stick thing. Because it will stick to this. And, and when my mother in law first taught me how to make this, she had a whole thing of arrows, like, you know, push it. Like, you don't want to mess with it too much, but you start with your hand. Getting it. So I kind of try to make it look sort of like a disc. This is kind of how I do it, but okay. So once again, I'm going to just go out. Does anyone want to try it? Sure. Okay. Because it's kind of a you want to put pressure on it, you know. You're telling me I'm doing it wrong, right? No. Oh, no. I, I, <laughs> this is a thing, there is no wrong, you know. I'm looking for arrows. Like, I think it's supposed to go in different ways. Oh, so totally went off the circle. That's okay. So just think your pan, you just want it to be a bigger circle than your pan. So she's but not pretty thin. thin. Like here's well, getting too thin. That's all. That's right. I didn't mention that part. I sure. assumed it was correct. I didn't. No, <laughs> I got to but that got stuck. See? Oh, but that's okay, okay because it doesn't matter because you just... Um, We're going to cut it off anyway. <laughs> see, just keep me. And then you just kind of correct it. I just kind of correct it. In see, I'm not going in. That's, that's your job. <laughs> nope. Okay. You're done already. I did. No. It doesn't, it, you know, and that's what that's what I was thinking this morning is you know half the dough fell on here and I'm piecing it in. That's what I want you guys to know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It comes out looking normal. So 
Um, you take one of these, this guy, and you do the same thing. I'm going to knock you over. That's a cool trick. See? Just say. But even if, you, if it tears and you get a hole, you just patch it. It just doesn't matter. And if you get like a really big hole on the top piece, like I said, you just put something in or make do something to but I want the big box, right? Yeah. So you know, this is why I usually wear a apron, but this is what I usually do. I kind of like put it in my pot belly and I roll it up. And see how here even I didn't kind of get it exactly right. Okay. It's gonna be okay. And then I like this. Yeah, that's your thin part. Well, no, <laughs> that uh, you know, I, have take, I have to take off a lot anyway. So what I do is I just kind of stick it over here. Because you don't even see that thin part. Yeah. And then uh, I just poke a few holes in it. But Debbie was saying that she's heard that you uh, I like have, egg whites. I've never seen that done. I've never had. I've never had that problem of the soggy bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know what the cool thing was today, I was thinking too, because I always, it's just been rogue for me, so I haven't thought about these little things, but the nice thing about doing it in Pyrex, you see how you can see that the underside is browned, right. which you can't see here. And so I actually left it in the oven longer to get that browner. So maybe it's going to taste like And sometimes I might like steal a smidge, <laughs> yeah, whichever one I'm working on. But it always seems to be a little left over somewhere, and I save it for another one. And like we were talking about earlier, you can freeze it, and I, I froze the stove many times. But usually, I make a whole pie and freeze it because I still have that box freezer. So. If you freeze the dough, do you just take it out like in the next one in the fridge? It pretty it softens up pretty quickly. It keeps the top be nice if it came out a little, you know. Not so thin. Not so many holes. No, no, yeah, yeah no. Just without holes or whatever. It's always starting to center and pushing out, so giving it a little weight. What did they call this thing? I remembered it earlier. Scraper? Yes. Wallpaper remover? Yes. Yeah. Don't tell me you did. Hold on to it. And this too, I lift it up and half it falls off and then you just catch it. So, and I just want to flash it. Yeah. 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 I just had lunch with him the other day, actually. Oh, she heard me. How funny. <laughs> I was just being funny. No, no. He's cute. He's sweet. Um, if I have double, it's kind of too much. Mm -hmm. And then it gets all yeah. kind of doughy. So I usually, um, I just don't, I just either cut off the bottom or cut the top, but it's better to the top. And there are a thousand ways you can do this, but I just do it like this. It's just secret to the pinching. Yeah. I just roll. take it and um, roll it like that and put my thumbs in the middle, which oh, make it to go like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, I see that happening. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, right. Right. So, see, it looks pretty, doesn't it? Very pretty. And this thing is also a great cleaner upper. So I plug a few holes. I always like freezer pipes. I have this weird thing about odd numbers. But if you want to do the, um, the little cutters, what's cool about these is they have those veins. So if you just um, give a little flower. And the same thing, you, so you want to all get the same consistency of uh, its depth, you know. So um, we're going to, uh, this is egg whites, but you can use, um, I, it's funny because I used to always use milk. And then I thought, oh, egg whites would be shinier and cooler. And I did egg whites today and it looks so kind of dry. So I think if you want it shinier, uh, maybe you would use milk. But, the, but if you use milk, the real thing you have to watch for, and this liquid too, you don't want to get big pockets of liquid in these holes because that doesn't cook either. And it's, it's just kind of doughy and funky. Not too much Maybe now, since I do it, I have to do the third. Yeah. I like to put them here. So since I'm putting them here, I'm going to have to make another couple of holes. So I cover them up. Uh -huh. But it, put it in this 425 degree oven. So I put it on a clean sheet. 425? I mean 450. Okay. Yeah, sure. Right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I like how you pay attention. Here? I would, put, I would put it on the mid, middle rack. Okay. So I don't know. And um, I put it there for about 10 or 15 minutes until it gets pretty brown. And then if it's really pretty brown, I tint it with foil. I turn it down to 350 for 50 minutes to an hour. And then I look at it because if it's, um, if it's not, I want it to be bubbling. You can see it bubbling on the edges. Mm -hmm. You want it, and if it's dripping, is better even. The more it's bubbling, the better. So if I have to go, if this is the finessing part I was talking about. If I have to go 15 more minutes, I let it go 15 more minutes. 
You know what I'm saying? And so I usually do um, two of these. Okay? So I just kind of usually make it about uh, overlap the size of the bottom of the side. I also have, because these also tend to be like a little, you know, greasy or whatever, buttery. And um, I have doilies that I got at Smart and Final. Mm -hmm. A lot of those I'll stick underneath too. Um, and with these kind of things too, if it overflowed into your pan, and if, even if it does it, take it off and um, cool it on a rack until it is completely cool and sets up. But if you let it sit on the pan, it will, and if there's juice on there, it will be stuck to the pan for the rest of your life. And it will Anyway, if it, I usually will keep adding raffia so it looks fun. Wow. Yay!